there viewers welcome back to the south main all channel 2008 Chevrolet. it's a trailblazer it's got the big four two and every light that could be on is on he wants us to look at the engine light uh no inspection on it um must be long overdue i think they're doing the clear code and drive it thing to see if they can get it through but uh i don't think that's worked so uh i believe he told us that it has a uh, air injection code in it um, which if i remember right you don't see many of these trailblades around here most of these things have long since broken half uh, the frames rotted out and these things like crazy but if i remember right they had an air pump that was mounted down on the driver's side frame rail uh, lots of problems with water intrusion and stuff and check valves going bad pressure switches things like that so let's see what it has for code see if the drive cycle's done and if it is an air injection code let's see what we can do to fix it or at least diagnose it um I don't know. I don't care what HVAC it has in it. We just want to get the uh, engine codes here. Like, I haven't seen a trailblazer in probably, It was probably around this year, I think, when they quit making these things. So, oops. We're going to pause that. These older ones take forever to scan. So, we're just going to skip right in the engine controller. So, I had three codes there. Let's see what we have. Let's see. Current and history codes. 418. Oh, and then we have some knock sensor codes too. Uh, this one is the only one right now that is mill requested that's turning this light on. That one's not mill requested. So, and this is what he told me he's having problems with secondary air injection pump relay control circuit. So, that's interesting. That's not an actual air injection problem, but this is a circuit code 418. Let's uh, go out of here real quick. Let's just jump into generic OBD2 and see uh, where he's at drive cycle wise. I think you can probably find this information under the OEM side. I'm way more familiar with this side. It's quite a bit easier. Okay, so it's got one monitor that's not set and actually is flagging two codes over here. Let's see if it's a, a pending and or see what it is. Okay, yep, so pending and current. So we got the 418, 455 is a current code, so he's got a large EVAP leak and he has a problem with air injection control. Um, interesting, it doesn't have a pending 455. So I'm not sure what all he's been doing to it. Um, we can go into uh, mode six and we'll see that likely the EVAP monitor uh, has yet to complete. Would be my assumption here. Oh, I don't want to go to mode six, you ding dong. Saying one thing and thinking another. Let's see, which monitor is not set? Oh, nope, it's a secondary air injection that's not set. Okay, obviously. I wasn't thinking, okay. All right, secondary air injection. Let's look at that, that 418. We're gonna go back into the OEM data because now I did see, um, I did see something. I did see a relay sitting in his cup holder in there. So I don't know, perhaps they tried a relay or maybe the relay's missing right now. <laughs> that would give us a code. And we're gonna hop back in the ECM. We should have some bi-directional control here, I'm assuming. So we'll go active tests. And then, let's see. oops. There it was, secondary air injection system. We can test the system, the pump relay, or the solenoid. So it uh, gives us the option to control. There's not much on it. There's the relay, there's the um, solenoid that runs the air diverter valve, I guess it would be. And then there's the pump itself. Let's just go here and see if we hear anything. Shouldn't. Yep, no, fault. Fault. Relay circuit open status fault. So yeah, it is showing a circuit fault uh, right here. All right, let's get a wire diagram and see what we need to do. Looks like the way for a little mud bog. A little mud bogging. Let's uh, before we even get a diagram, let's just have a little peek under the under the lid there. Kind of a little visual inspection around. Thing did have quite a few miles on it. Sometimes you can learn a little bit just from looking. The only missing relay I see is right there, but let's find where this uh, air injection relay lives. Relay number 69er, which is that one there. And it 
it's in there so that's good let's look at our diagram uh, air pump fuse number 64 that's the big one that's this guy right here and then we should also have a small one so wow 60 amp fuse on that uh, air injection pump that's cray cray 60 amp or wow I would think that's only like maybe a 15 amp motor or so but anyhow let's uh, get a diagram see what we see Grab a pointing apparatus let's see here we go secondary air injection uh, air pump relay left front of chassis oh that's interesting there must be a is there a second relay oh there is oh this is the air solenoid relay oh okay that's right these got the relay underneath so the relay that we're looking at here is for the solenoid so this is a relay we need to look at is this one here for the pump so there's our fuse uh there are 60 amp fuse that feeds that that goes down to the air injection pump okay i understand and then here's the control side so we've got a pink wire going to the control side which runs off this fuse here air solenoid looks like 54 but i can't see real well goes down and then this wire here is the control wire air pump relay control so we do need to get down underneath this thing that sucks because it looks all muddy <laughs> so first of all let's just check let's see if this fuse is any good this 15 amp fuse uh, we're not worried about the solenoid uh, the only one we're worried about is is this guy down here so we're gonna have to go down there and make some checks Tesla on the diagram there it shows like fuse 54 or something if I look on here and fuse 54 is O2 sensor and on here fuse number 63 air solenoid 15 amp is what it says fuse number 63 so now I need to find it God, yeah, my eyesight really sucks it's getting worse there we go fuse 63 15 amper row three row two it's this one right here good and good okay so we're good on that that's pretty much all we can do from up here of course we can look at the uh, fuse number 61 also I believe it was Let's get back here, big fuse, 61, wherever that was. JK's fuse, 64, fuse 64, which was this one here. We just wanna have a look at that, make sure the top of it doesn't look like it's open, and it doesn't. Okay, well let me get it on the left. We'll go down and see, probably just gonna find some green wires, I imagine, uh, if this is living where I think it lives. And I'm betting because I saw this relay sitting in his ashtray that they've probably uh, got diverted because they were looking into here. So let's get underneath this thing. Alrighty, well there it is. Uh, like I said, the customer is nice enough to take a mud bottom before they brought it in. So there's your relay. There's your pump. Here's some mud. What we're going to do is we're just going to kind of clean off the affected area that we want to look at. See if there's any broken wires on it currently. Don't see any, but I don't want to unplug it while it's all muddy. I'm just going to cl clean off this area here just a little bit. And then we'll see what we're missing on that uh, relay, if anything. Got our two big wires, our one. Uh, <laughs> look at that, put the light right smack in your way. Try over here. We got our two big wires, that, which should, should run from that 60 amp. Our little wires should run from that 15 amp. And then our control wire. From the pewter. Cover your face. Now we can see, kind of. Let's unplug it. Well, here, let me let me hook my Tesla somewhere. I'm gonna attach this up to the transmission that a little squeeze and a click there we go I just don't then we're gonna push the pin in here wiggle it down oh she's nice and clean we should have power on one of these big ones and we do and then the little side here what color wire is that my guy 
let's identify how do you identify I identify as a wire broken wire you guys just missed the money shot <laughs> I thought I seen a little pokey hole there so there's your problem lady not a real fun video we should have power on one of these wires probably this pink one nope maybe 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 this is the power wire I would have thought that pink one would have had oh oh yeah have you ever had the double money shot in one video dun, 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 dun. sexy music enhance enhance I don't want you boys to miss this one right, everybody get your Kleenex in here ready oh yeah oh keep it in frame oh yeah Ooh, baby. There it is. Look at that. Double money shot. One video. What kind of shop is this guy running? Let's see. This should have power in it. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to get out of this. I think it's the pink one that was supposed to have power. Oh, more corrosion. She's corroded. All the way up into her. Wow, way up in there. We'll get that wire out. We'll get this wire out. I believe this one is the one that should have power on it. Ooh, don't slice your finger, little fellow. Now we're down to shiny copper. Ta-da! Ta-da-da-da! Okay, and then that's our hot wire. This is our control wire. Strip that back a little bit. Come here. You get the money shot, you're gonna see some blood. Okay. I've got this little test lake because I thought we were gonna need it. Let's go deep into that wire if we can. Oh, there we go. We're slid into that one. We're gonna slide into this one. Okay. There's that. Now, with our scan tool, we should be able to turn this relay on, aka light the light. Bingo, bango, and back off. On, off, on, off. And now our circuit says, hey, you're an okay dude. But when we pull our test light out, it says, hey, you got a fault. Oh, hey, it's that guy. Uh, so that was easy. And I believe we might even have enough good wire here to make a repair. Let's, let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? Looks a little pussy down to that point. Really need about an inch or so. Get rid of bad stuff. Yeah, probably good enough. Eh. I've said it once, I'll say it again. I've seen worse. We'll cut that up into there a little ways. And this one right about into here. We're gonna do the ground side first. I'm gonna get some wire. We'll have to extend these out a little. That was a fail. There, Knipex. All right, well, let me get some wire. We'll twist, we'll solder, we'll make some blobs, some heat shrink. We're electing to use the solder heat shrink method here. I've soldered on the uh, lower ones. We've got the heat shrink with the adhesive. All right, so there's that one. Let me get her a little bit here more on the back side. Ooh, yeah. Nice, we'll let that solidify. Got the other one, I'll show you guys connecting up on that end up there. Just using some 18 gauge AWG wire. Classic red and black. Doesn't really matter what color you use. If this needs repaired again anyways, it's gonna need a new connector. Borderline could use one this time around, but I think we're gonna be okay. 
All right, we'll let those babies cool down. Be sure to slide your heat shrink on before you make the new connection. That's embarrassing. If somebody sees you or you're making a video and it happens, that one's still a little warm. Gotta be careful there. These wires are about the same length. They don't really have to be, but I'm not sure if this guy still goes to car shows with this thing or not. I don't want him getting points taken away if he does. There's that. We're gonna leave our wires a little long. That's gonna give us uh, a little easier repair. Plus, we won't have to wad it right up on the joints. Oh, I need to turn on the soldering gun here. I forgot. We're using our Weller. I think it's who it is. Makes this one. I think it's a Weller. We'll take a look. She's gas powered. Works pretty nice. We'll let that get heated up again here. We're gonna make this connection, then we'll then we'll do the red wire because the key's still on and it's still hot and I don't want things, I don't want to have to change a fuse. Find out here, I put a little solder on there and then let it suck right down into the wire. There it is, so that one's good. We'll heat shrink that one and move on to the next one. It's heat shrunk, it has been shrank. There's our red one. We'll get a good mechanical twist on them bad boys. Make them hold hands. That's what I call it. Call it holding hands. I don't know what the official term is. That's what my parents used to threaten us with. Us boys would be fighting. That you're gonna put us in our get along shirt. <laughs> Stick you on the front yard and make you hold hands. Something like that. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, so that baby's all good. And now we'll heat shrink the very last one down. Easy fix. Interesting that it had two broken wires. I wonder if at some point Somebody was down here doing the hokey pokey, you know what I mean? Test light or something. Hard to say. So I'm gonna let these cool down. Then we're gonna plug it in and make sure everything is cool. And of course we'll, we'll tape up our mess here. Who knows? You know, we still don't know if we have a good air pump, uh, if the diverter valve solenoid, you know, we can still have a, a crap ton of problems. Must be this is a southern vehicle, or was at some point, because it's really underneath the mud. It's still black, huh? Let's see, just gonna hold them wires right there. I like so. So there's that there's the harness. We'll stick our loom back on there for a moment. Nice and clean. She's nice and clean up in there. Plugged in. Here we go, moment of truth. Open our scan tool back up now. I'm gonna turn on the relay, which should only turn on the pump. <sighs> you hear the relay clicking. Come on, little guy, you know you want to go, woo! <laughs> That's a problem with these old systems. Let's see. Oops, time expired, 30 second timeout. All right, well, we kind of fixed it. We fixed the relay, the relay clicks. It doesn't mean that it's working. Oh, look, there's a needle on the ground. Oh, good. That's what we need next. That's for step number two. Let's see if we can go into our air injection pump relay right now. Nope, still got no timer. Might have to cycle the dang key. Stupid GM and their stupid timers. One of these wires is gonna be hot. I don't know which one that one is. And then this is the one that turns on with the relay. So now we gotta wait to see if we can 
getting our air injection system again. Make sure the relay is turning on. I hear it clicking, doesn't mean it works. No. Nope. Dang it! Frickin' GM. Okay, let's see if our relay is working now. Stupid GMs. What the world? Do I not have a good connection or is our relay really bad? That would be fun. No sugar. Broken wires and a bad relay. Yeah, must be. We got power on that side. When the relay clicks, just because the relay clicks, what's that mean, folks? Doesn't mean it's good. It just means it clicks. Freaking timeout, stupid GM. I like to meet the engineer who made this software. Okay. So let's just go like this. Big one, big one, jumper. Holy snakes! Caught my frickin' pliers on fire. So that's not good. This motor is seized right up tight. Uh, and that's why the relay is burned out. So the contacts in the relay is burned out. However, I don't know if we, did we just smoke that 16 up fuse? <laughs> no, burnt the damn tips off my uh, pliers though. Yep, yeah, burnt the tip right off it. So, so, so buttons on my underwear. That's the sucky part. He needs a relay. Motor seized up, obviously, which they usually always are because they're typically full of water. Let's see. Oh, oh, shit! Sorry, didn't mean to swear at you. So yeah, I mean, pumps full of water, as you can tell. Pumps full of water, so it needs a new pump. It needs a new relay. 50 bucks says the diverter valve's bad, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's finish checking it out. They have what I like to refer to as the trickle down effect. <laughs> so once the air injection pump starts ingesting water, um, so this, this here, right here, should be the air intake for that pump. Yeah, it's down that direction. Um, and nothing holding this together, all the screws and everything are broken in it, so. Once they start ingesting water, then everything goes to pot. Whole world's going to pot. Who sings that song? Willie Nelson, I think. And old Merle, I think they sung, uh, the whole world's going to pot. It's a funny song, funny guy. Love me some Willie. Vanessa met Willie Nelson, you know, she has her picture with Willie. She had her hair in braids and he had his hair in braids. Uh, this is the diverter valve here. It's all gooped up with silicone and stuff. I'm sure it probably doesn't work. Let's, uh, let's kick it on and off, see if we hear it thunking. If we don't, we'll make sure we have control, but these usually make an obvious sound when they open and close. Here we go, air injection solenoid. Oh, listen to you, listen to your bless your little heart. Start beatboxing there. Um, oh man, she's got she sucks some bad stuff down the engine at some point. So, what we can do now, let's unhook the hose from it. Let me go get a bigger hose we can put on there. We'll give her a little whoosh, whoosh, see if it works. We got some of this fancy clear hose. What we do? Get her back down in there. Come on. Some stiff old hose here. Oh yeah. Where my hose at? Right now it should be blocked off. Ready? We'll put my lips on it. Oh, came off. Come on, baby. Okay, now we should be able to open it. Get on there. Oh, you freak hole. I don't really want to get it on all the way because I don't want it to get stuck. We just need it on the end of that diverter valve. There we go. Get it to stay where I can free up my other hand. Now if we open the solenoid, should be able to blow through it. Yep. 
Beautiful. I can't believe that thing works. Well, partially it works. It opens and closes. Don't they have, yeah, they've got a pressure sensor in it. Indicated pressure, uh, 14, so it's reading atmospheric, so that's good. So at this point, it is what it is. It needs a new air pump, we need to clean all the water out of the lines, and it needs a new relay, and it had two broken wires. Tell me you were a southern vehicle in a state without inspections without telling me you were a southern vehicle in a state without inspections. Uh, because how in the world, you know, that stuff didn't all just happen at once. Probably what happened is the pump seized up because it got water in it. Somebody went down to test the relay, poked a couple holes in it, and then, and then that was it. And then the person never fixed it. So we unnecessarily fixed a couple wires. <laughs> Hoping that that was gonna be it for this fella. However it is not, but that folks is the way the cookie crumbles. I was hired to diagnose the air injection system and we did, we came, we saw, we conquered. I gotta call them, tell them what's up with that and then let them know obviously there's you know an EVAP code in it. Probably a, probably a vent valve stuck open. Let's see if we can hear the vent valve click and that's probably buried under a foot of mud back there. I already jumped out of the vehicle. Let's get back in here. Let's see if we hear the, the canister vent valve clicking. See if we can just do a quick diag on the uh, EVAP system. Let's go to active tests. EVAP vent valve. Okay, I hear it clicking. Where's our fuel tank pressure at? Well, pressure's starting to increase with it close. Maybe this is something he's already looked at because with the vent valve closed, you can see we're already, we're starting to build a little bit of pressure, which is normal. That's on a good sealed system's gonna build pressure as soon as you close that vent valve. If it's warm inside your shop, feels volatile, it's gonna start expanding. So when I open the vent valve, it should go back to wherever it was for atmospheric. Okay, three, two, one. Boom, there we go. So interesting. I'll see what he wants to do. Uh, it obviously doesn't have a large leak, otherwise it wouldn't have just built pressure there in that little bit of time. So, that's it. Hope you guys understood. I'm not sure if we'll get the job on this one, but if we do, it won't be fixed today because we would have to order some parts too. And just for reference, if you guys are looking up what the heck is this air pump, we call it an air pump, like it pumps air, uh, but air is ac actually an acronym, A-I-R, air injection reactor is what it is. And what it does is it pumps air, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> so yeah, it pumps air into the manifold to promote heating of the catalyst you know during cold starts that's the only time it uses them a couple companies still use them toyota uh, i still have a double air pump system on my tundra i drive a 2020 tundra and she still runs the twin air pump jobbies um, not a lot of manufacturers still using air pumps some of them do though uh, gm has always been a disaster with them of course like everything they make they always have a problem they always ingest water They've tried mounting them in numerous locations and their efforts always fail. Uh, but they're the, probably the most failure prone air injection systems. Back in the day, cars used to have them and they were belt drive, you know, your belt, your smog pump people call them. So same, same kind of concept, but yeah, for some reason General Motors has never been able to get that right. Um, and you know, as I predicted, it'd be full of water and stuff. So what do you expect? Look where it lives. <laughs> and uh, I don't know where you guys live, but I do know that I want you to go in that comment section. Don't tell me where you live, but questions, comments, concerns, put them down there. Find it's Insty Facebook. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.